This is the uh, Dallas Semiconductor DS1204 Electronic Key. It's a pretty old part. Uh, date code is 1988, uh, 30 years ago. Uh, it's a 128-bit serial problem with some security features. Uh, the idea of it would be uh, issued to a user and they would plug it into some equipment, uh, a photocopy or maybe some industrial gear, uh, and it would grant them uh, access rights to it. It also had 128 uh, bits of memory so you could store things like a uh, usage. So if you're doing like a pay-per-use type application, uh, this was uh, an attempt uh, at that. Uh, you can see it's uh, basically a plastic package. It's been epoxied. Uh, it's got a serial protocol interface on this side here. Let's uh, strip away the epoxy and see if we can sort down the security key. So here's what was inside that package, an integrated circuit uh, and a lithium battery. And that's because this is a RAM-based design. Uh, 30 years ago, having an EEPROM to store non-volatile information and then putting the programming circuits because the uh, EEPROM cell requires about 20 volts to program. Uh, that all lay uh, far in the future. So in this year here, the vendor had to use RAM and of course a battery. They did guarantee 10 years uh, service life and uh, that of course was pretty good, except a lot of the stuff got designed to uh, test the measurement equipment and eventually the batteries vanished and the calibration data uh, went with them. So uh, let's uh, take a look now at the actual integrated circuit. Let's see what we can see. So here's the whole silicon die. There's uh, four major areas. Uh, the first is the most obvious of the regular pattern. Uh, if you count the columns, you get 16. If you count the rows, you get 16. And of course, that's 256 when you multiply them together. And that matches the 256 uh, bits of data this chip stores. Uh, 128 bits reserved for the key and 128 bits reserved for the user programming. You can see there's no distinction between the key and the actual user program. Uh, this is a very weak uh, key. Uh, it would be very easy to hack it, uh, but uh, it wasn't really, I suspect, meant for super high security applications. Um, for example, you could have just, uh, just partially de-encapsulated with a battery and, of course, uh, e-beamed and read the gates and figured out the uh, the key program very, very trivially. Um, the other two layers and below are, are logic gates. Uh, they have the classic pattern. Uh, you always lay down a voltage rail and a ground rail, then between them you lay down your gates. And that's why you see this very regular uh, pattern. Um, and uh, there's only so many gates, of course. There's AND, OR, um, NOR, NAND, XOR, buffer, and invert. So the patterns, of course, are very uh, repetitive. The interesting thing about the one in the lower left, it almost looks like those are touchdown pads, uh, which is uh, used during manufacturing, and uh, the wafer prober can actually program the part. But, uh, of course, that wouldn't make sense because they're all round-based, um, so perhaps they have a different function. Um, one neat thing about Maxim parts from the 1980s is they had a lot of uh, uh, chip art on them, and this one's no exception. If we uh, just pan over to the uh, upper left, we can see... Uh, a little key, uh, and of course, since this is an electronic key, it's a very appropriate bit of artwork. Uh, those uh, letters, of course, are the initials of the mass designers and probably the electronics engineers uh, who designed the chips. And um, I suspect if you were to start diving down to the patents, you'll start seeing some of those initials starting matching up. Uh, well, speaking of patents, uh, to sort down the functions that are on the upper right, uh, the patent system is always is, uh, very generous. It tells us uh, a lot about what's going on here. Um, the actual patent for the uh, chip is this one here. Uh, you can see if I flip to the next page over here, it of course is the uh, actual drawing of the uh, circuitry. Uh, the one that's a little more interesting though is the one called Power Controller for Circuits with Battery Backup. And of course it's contemporaneous with the patent for the overall chip. Uh, and if we come to this page here, you can of course see there's, um, there's two inputs to a, a RAM for the power ring. There's the battery and the external supply. And they spent a lot of effort, of course, to make sure that the uh, contents of the uh, SRAM doesn't get uh, corrupted. And, uh, for example, here we see a FET. And then if I go back into the actual uh, chip drawing, uh, we can see a very, very large FET structure here. And I think those, of course, match up. Um, and, and likewise, if you want, I think there's a fairly good correlation, actually, with this diagram and the actual a analog section. Uh, what else? Well, here we have, of course, the actual logo of the Dallas uh, Semiconductor Company. Uh, this uh, firm was bought by Maxim eventually and uh, uh, folded into their offerings. Uh, otherwise, uh, it looks like a very uh, classic example of a mid-1980s uh, uh, integrated circuit. So, uh, as always, if you'd like to take a look at these uh, die photographs in greater details, I have um, more detailed photographs on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com.